Pharisees get a bad rap. Uh, and depending on which gospel you read, it's worse than others. Uh, the, what people miss is the, the actual historical context. Uh, there, were, there were many Jewish groups at that time that were vying for the, the soul of the people. The Sadducees were the priestly class. They're the ones who ran the temple. Uh, priesthood was hereditary and passed down, and they were seen as, quote, rulers, as it were. Uh, a good friend of mine, a biblical scholar and anthropologist, refers to the Sadducees as the ISIS of that period, because they imposed their version of Judaism and sometimes brutally. The Pharisees are the our ancestors and precursors to rabbinic Judaism and they get a, a bad rap for two reasons. One is they're the ones who are accused of being quote legalistic, of focusing simply on the law. But what their argument was that temple sacrifice was no longer the valid measure of faith in Judaism. And they said that the way to God was through following God's commandments and mitzvot. And they wanted to take Judaism out of the temple and return it to the people. So their insistence on following the law was no follow mitzvot because this is what God has commanded us to do. And they used the burgeoning synagogue system in order to spread that word. Where they get a bad rap is firstly um, in sort of an inside baseball kind of way they were doing a very similar thing that Jesus was doing in his ministry. Taking religion back to the people and meeting them where they were. And so it was such a similar message that they kind of felt that they were you know, Burger King and McDonald's or Coke and Pepsi. So it was sort of like a cola war <laughs> that you know, the, they were like, well, you've interpreted mitzvahs this way, but we really want them interpreted this other way. So that was really the conflict. Um, and then uh, it, it really starts with Mark, who's you know, our, the first gospel that, that we have recorded, or we say is the first one. And again, this is post-temple destruction. Again, he's vying for the soul of the people. He's creating an ecclesia. And it's in competition with what the Pharisees were trying to do to maintain Judaism with the literal destruction of the temple. So again, there was that tension. So at places where Jesus comes into real political and power conflict is with the Sadducees. Mm. But for political purposes, every once in a while, Mark said it was the Pharisees. Because the Sadducees were gone. So, you know, you got to have a bogeyman. Uh, and so, for example, when he says, the scribes of the Pharisees came to Jesus, that's a clue that he's really talking about the Sadducees because the Pharisees didn't have scribes. If the Pharisee wanted to confront Jesus, the Pharisee would have stood up and said, excuse me, Jesus, but you're interpreting this way. What about this way? So when it's the, when you see things like that, He's really talking about Sadducees. Uh, so, you know, they, some, some of the things that the Sadducees did, the Sadducees were the ones who went to Herod and said, get rid of this heretic. Uh, Pharisees would not have been upset with him turning tables over in the temple because they were trying to do that also. <laughs> and they weren't in charge of the temple, so it wouldn't have pissed them off. Uh, and, in fact... Uh, as I said, being precursor to rabbinic Judaism, uh, it's because of the Pharisees that Jews exist today. Uh, and again, for some people, that it, in and of itself is problematic, and so they don't like Pharisees because they kept Judaism alive during the diaspora. And so the, the form of Judaism we practice today is actually 
a descendant of pharisaical practice. So Jesus was it, so if there was tension between them, it was a more of an insider baseball kind of tension to competing groups with very very similar messages, trying to uh, capture the souls of, of the same group of people. Uh, some eventually followed. Jesus' way, and Paul helped spread that version, and he was also you know, more in line with the Pharisees, and again, there was a lot of just internal conflict, because they were looking at him saying, well, you're doing it, but you're doing it wrong. Um, but it wasn't a, they didn't necessarily view him as heretical and would want to stop him in, in that sense, the way that it's often portrayed. Mm. So, what does it feel like or how is it perceived when Christians talk about the Pharisees the way they do to the Jewish community? It is, uh, because it is used as a pejorative, it is very oppressive mm -hmm. to be called a Pharisee because it, it's as if you're calling us heretics and quote non-believers. Mm -hmm. And it, but it's even worse when Christians use it against other Christians. It, it would be the same thing as a straight person saying about the actions of another straight person that they don't like, saying, oh, that's so gay. Taking the negative stereotype of homosexuality and using it as a put down. So when a Christian says of another Christian leader, oh, this man is a Pharisee. He's basically saying, oh, this man's not a real Christian. He's a Jew. Uh -huh. And he's a Jew who killed Christ. Because that's the other thing. Because it's, it's that residual of the Jews killed Christ. And therefore, we are, you know, we are now the evil empire. So it, it brings up a lot of those feelings that um, you know, have been been much more in a sense of healing over the years, especially since the Vatican officially recognized that that was not the case. That it was indeed the Romans and it was for the Roman purposes uh, you know, politically and historically that Jesus was killed. So it, it brings up all of those things that were used to justify a lot of atrocities, particularly in Europe against Jews, you know, as Christ killers, as heretics, uh, non-believers, you know, which led to pogroms and uh, inquisition, expulsions. So there's a lot of, it's a very, very loaded phrase to use to or around Jews to accuse someone of being a Pharisee. 